Hi, everyone. Welcome to Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We're going to talk about uh, some pretty exciting new research that just came out May 5th and May 6th, two new studies. They're really exciting and very significant. And uh, once we get into them, uh, you'll understand why they're so important and why I'm really excited to talk about them and what nutrition, diet, and health can do and play in um, to possibly even help uh, promote our overall health for brain function. Um, so first, for those of you who are new to me, um, uh, thank you for joining and thank you for watching. We're going to do some deep dive into the science, uh, but we're also going to talk about how that relates uh, to personal health, to longevity, uh, to a lot of different things. So if you want to go back um, I will be posting all the research, uh, the two studies, and what I talked about uh, in the areas below. Uh, we'll also be adding them to the uh, live streams too as well. Um, so first, for those of you who are um, new to me, uh, my name is Jeff Palmer. I've been in the natural products industry for about 35 years, um, working with some of the top companies in the United States in uh, distribution and retail and um, product production. Uh, so just about every aspect of the business um, I've been involved with at the corporate level. Um, I am a natural bodybuilding and natural physique champion. Uh, I am 58 years of old and am master's champion in both categories too as well. Um, uh, I am a author. Uh, there's one of my books that we'll actually dive into, uh, heat shock proteins. Um, and we'll talk, be talking about heat shock proteins in just a minute as we dive into the research. Um, but I am an author, national lecturer with hundreds of national lectures, uh, natural uh, product patent holder, and a two-time Nexty winner. You can see it right there. That's the Nexty Award. Nexty Award is like the Oscars for supplements. It is the top supplement given out in the United States. And we've not won it once, but twice in 2016 and 2018, as well as over 10 other national awards uh, combined. I am and have been vegan for 36 years. Um, and uh, I was voted and selected number 40 out of the top 100 most influential vegans by Plant Based News. I co created the very first 100% vegan bodybuilding championship in the world. Uh, it's a natural bodybuilding championship. Um, reason I named my company Clean Machine is because I want to encourage people to do fitness the natural way without drugs. So first, the disclaimer uh, for all of you uh, out there. Uh, this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. The studies I will be talking to uh, you about, I will be actually uh, talking specifically quotes from the studies. I will be providing the titles of the studies so that you can look up the information yourself and follow along or read it for yourself. I won't be uh, commenting except for uh, explanation of what the studies are talking about a little bit more in layman's terms. So the two studies we're going to look at, um, diet, nutrition, and, and how it affects brain health. Um, so what does that have to do with fitness, you're probably wondering. Well, of course, the brain controls every aspect of our body. And without a healthy brain, we can't have a healthy body or any fitness level whatsoever. So it all starts with the brain. So let's take a look at how diet nutrition can affect the brain based on these two studies. So the first study we're going to be talking about is was released May 5th of 221, uh, which is this year. So just uh, just a few days ago. And it, it is entitled, and I'm going to read this exactly verbatim, so I'm not ad-libbing on anything. D-Z-N-E Alzheimer's study, colon, a Mediterranean diet might protect against memory, memory loss and dementia. So that is the name of the study. So if you want to look up that study, uh, you can definitely do so. Uh, a Mediterranean diet might protect against 
memory loss, and dementia. So let's dive into that study and see what the study is saying. And remember, what I'm about to tell you is actually exact quotes from the study. So I'm not ad-libbing here. It's not my opinion. These are exact words from the study. So this is the first study. So it's looking at how diet could possibly affect uh, brain health, overall brain health, and then look at possibly what are the contributing factors. Okay, so quote, in Alzheimer's disease, neurons in the brain die. Largely responsible for the death of neurons are certain protein deposits. Now this part's important. The protein deposits in the brain of affected individuals, so-called beta amyloid proteins, which form clumps or plaques between neurons and tau proteins, which stick together inside of the neurons. This, the cause of these deposits are as yet unclear. And it's interesting, I wanna stop right there from the quote, and the cause of these deposits are yet unclear. So here is a study that was released May 5th, 2021. And one day later, the next study we're gonna talk about actually addresses that one sentence there. The causes of these deposits are yet unclear. The next study is actually gonna look at what may be those causes of those deposits. So what this study is talking about is misfolded proteins. So what is a misfolded protein? Uh, for some of you, I'm gonna be pulling up on the screen, not everyone, uh, what a picture of misfolded proteins look like. So there are three different types of proteins. One, the protein that you consume or eat, that's a dietary protein. Then our body breaks it down into pieces, right? And that is uh, then can form actually what's called structural proteins. So structural proteins form uh, parts of our cells, uh, independent uh, intracellular structures, and even enzymes. But an enzyme is not actually a structural protein. It's the third type of protein, which is called a functional protein. So you have dietary proteins that you eat. Those get breaking do broken down and form structural proteins, which become parts of cells uh, or cellular structures. And that's a structural protein but then there are functional proteins. Functional proteins actually do work. They carry out mechanisms in our body, like enzymes. So enzymes are actually part of almost every system in our body and are carry out work in transforming one material into a different material. So as our body can create lots of different materials that it uses in the cells. Now, what has all this got to do with what's going on inside the brain? Well, there is another functional protein, and it's called a heat shock protein, or HSP. You can look that up. It's deep science, so you'll see a lot of different studies when you type in heat shock proteins. But heat shock proteins or stress proteins, um, what they do is they can take misfolded proteins or damaged proteins. So when you look at a protein that's made, it's a long strand, right? With amino acids all strung together once inside our body, but it's not actually doing anything at that point. It doesn't become a structural protein yet until it gets folded into a very specific shape. And it's that shape that dictates what that protein will be used for, an eye cell, an ear cell, a hair cell, a, a cell on your tongue. Those are all just different forms or shapes of those proteins, and that folding is very important. So heat shock proteins actually do that folding. Now, when you exercise, you can damage proteins or some of the fold gets taken out of place. The heat shock protein can fold it back and put it back together in its right place. And now it's what's called a perfect protein. So there is a difference between a misfolded protein, a clumped protein, like the tau proteins that we were just talking about from the study, a damaged or misfolded protein that can clump up the cells. But all of these different types of bad proteins um, are, are actually what is causing the brain to get gum up. These are, it's like garbage proteins, basically, right? And when the garbage starts to accumulate in our brain, 
what happens? It's the same thing that happens. If you just let your garbage pile up in your house, what would happen? It would start to get overrun with garbage. It would stink. Things would rot. Things would die. And that's what's happening in the brain. We're basically getting these damaged structural uh, proteins accumulating in our brain. So where is this stuff coming from? That's the big question. So let's jump back into this first study. This is the May 5th study, the DZNE Alzheimer's study. So they looked at 512 subjects with an average age of around 70 years of age. And uh, they looked at those who had a Mediterranean-like dietary pattern. And that was described as those eating a high intake of vegetables, legumes, fruits, grains, cereals, fish, and monounsaturated fats like from olive oil. So that was directly quoted from the study. And this diet, and I'll quote again, direct quote, this diet was, has a low intake of dairy, red meat, and saturated fat. Okay, what the researchers found, and I'm gonna read it again so I can stay specifically quoting directly from the study. The researchers led by Michael, Michael Wagner found that those who ate an unhealthy diet had more pathological levels of these biomarkers, uh, biomarkers in cerebral spinal fluid than those who regularly ate a more plant-based Mediterranean-like diet. In the memory tests, the part participants who did not adhere to the Mediterranean diet also performed worse than those who ate mostly fish and vegetables. There was also a significant positive correlation between closer adherence to a Mediterranean-like diet and a higher volume of the hippocampus. The hippocampus is an area of the brain that is considered to control memory. It shrinks early and severely in Alzheimer's disease patients. So those eating a higher plant-based diet had higher amounts of brain matter. Now this is pretty exciting because look, I wanna keep my brain around as long as I can. So it's the diet that was actually making a difference. But this study was corollary. Now corollary says, okay, we measure all these people, they ate this certain way, and over here, most of them had this result. It's a correlation, but it's not causation. It doesn't say this causes this because they don't know what the method of action is that's delivering that. Well, that's what was so exciting when I found this new study published just one day later in May 6 of 2021. Now, I want to uh, note that this is a preliminary animal study, so further research in humans is needed. But this is brand new information, and that's what makes it so exciting. Uh, please also note this is, as a vegan, I do not support animal testing, but I am interested in uh, what is learned from these because we can move away from that. And hopefully, ideally, in the future, in the very near future, we'll, we'll go right to humans and looking at this more observationally and, and start to understand the functionality in humans. We can leave the poor animals out of this. Uh, in this in this instance, they were looking at uh, very tiny worms. Um, uh, so um, let's talk about the study. So the title of this study, for those of you who want to look it up, is colonization of, oh, forgive me for butchering this one, but Canaver habitatus elegans. Elegans are a class of uh, small, small worms. Uh, they have a very short uh, lifespan so that scientists would like to use them uh, but they also respond well to human uh, bacteria like what's found in our gut. So very similar there. So they can look at digestive uh, issues in them very easily. So um, uh, the elegans gut with human enteric bacterial pathogens leads to proteostasis disruption that is rescued by butyrate. And that's the big key piece of this, uh, this title of the study. I'm going to go post that uh, in the comments section um, down below. Let me 
me open up the comment section so that you guys can actually do this. And I'll go ahead and pull it up on the screen while I'm talking about it uh, so you can see it right there on the screen. That is the title of the study and the link to the study too as well. And again, I'll be posting that in the comments section at a later time if you're watching this later on. Um, so this study uh, was talking about the this accumulation of misfolded proteins in the brain causing brain dysfunction, right? So the research... And, and I'm going to quote again, because this is from the second study. Uh, the takeaway is that bacteria colonize the gut. The, uh, the key takeaway is that the bacteria that colonize the gut can affect protein folding in distant tissues. Now, this is really important because that means that what's going on in our gut can result in misfolded proteins in our brain. That's extraordinary. That's something that we haven't really seen a whole lot of before in, in uh, current research. So this is a quote again, and I'm gonna read this quote. Quote, recent studies have shown that patients with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease are deficient in these good fiber-eating bacteria. So we are seeing now a real strong correlation that the brains of people with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are deficient in their guts of certain bacteria that eat fiber. These are butyrate producing bacteria. So why is that important? Okay, so when we eat plant fiber, and fiber only comes from plants, so let's get that part straight. You cannot get fiber from animal materials. Um, so when we eat plants, that fiber goes into our digestive tract. The probiotics in our digestive tract then actually, certain probiotics, not all of them, they're called butyrate producing probiotics. They consume this fiber and they basically poop out butyrates. So what are butyrates? Well, let's jump back into the study and, and, and see what's going on there. Um, so according to the researcher, nearly all of the bacteria they have found associated with protein misfolding was also associated with antibiotic resistant infections in people. Okay, so that's a mouthful. So they were showing that when we uh, have bad bacteria in high activity in our gut, they produce misfolded proteins. And this misfolded proteins then go into our bloodstream and can end up in our brain, causing those plaques and formations that shut down our brain processes. Now, this is pretty amazing because uh, what we're talking about is bad bacteria versus good bacteria in the gut. So the bad bacteria are actually producing damaged proteins, misfolded proteins that are going to our brain and causing brain garbage to accumulate to the point where our brain is dysfunctioning or shutting down or resulting in pathogenesis, disease states. Okay, so let's get to the next sentence. With the increasing antibiotic resistance, our bodies are colonizing bacteria that are more resistant to antibiotics than ever before. As we take antibiotics, we eliminate protective, the good guys, we eliminate protective commensal bacteria and could enrich the population of detrimental microbes. We're exploding the expansion of bad bacteria that contribute to disease pathogenesis. Now, that's a direct quote from the study. Further goes on, he says, quote, further experiments demonstrated that the beneficial effect of butyrate depended on the bacteria that colonized the gut. We also found that bacteria-derived protein aggregates contribute to the observed disruption of host proteostasis. That's the balance of good proteins in the body. Together, these results reveal the significance of enteric infection and gut dysbiosis on the pathogenesis 
of protein conformational diseases. That's protein, protein damage protein uh, diseases. And demonstrate the potential of using butyrate producing microbes <laughs> as a preventative and treatment strategy for neurodegenerative uh, diseases. Wow. So to finalize the last quote, more importantly, beneficial commensal bacteria that produce butyrate. And the only way you can produce butyrate, the bacteria that do that feed on fiber, plant fiber. So the quote, more importantly, beneficial commensural bacteria that produce butyrate can suppress this detrimental effect. That's so freaking exciting. <laughs> that is so simple. We simply consume more plant-based fiber that it, it flourishes our good bacteria, the good probiotics that produce butyrates and help eliminate and, 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 and suppress this detrimental effect of the bad bacteria. So you got bad bacteria producing brain poop, which screws up the brain. And then you got good bacteria producing butyrates that shut that stuff down and clean it out. Decreases the inflammation, decreases the negative effects. This is so exciting and so simple. Eat more plant fiber, produce more butyrates, bloom the good probiotics, feed the good probiotics, and they're going to expand. You feed the bad probiotics, the bad bacteria, and these bad bacteria are created when we consume animal products, animal proteins, saturated fat, dairy, eggs, meat. These are the ones that actually create a bile environment inside of the gut. And this bile environment is where bad bacteria thrive. And this is how what you eat can actually end up causing major problems and health issues later in life. And the more you eat, the animal from the animal foods, the more you're breeding those bad bacteria that produce screwed up proteins, damaged proteins that it can accumulate in the brain and cause brain dysfunction. The more you eat plant products that have high in fiber, whole food plant products, that fiber then feeds the good bacteria. They expand and because they're being fed more, they produce more butyrates and this butyrates can clear out that stuff. This is amazing. Now we actually have a causal relationship. Now, this is preliminary animal research, so more research has to be done in humans, but this is truly an exciting statement on something that has eluded uh, scientists for a while. And they've been trying to target the garbage. They've been trying to find better garbage men, right? And the answer is right there in our gut. The garbage is being created in our gut and the garbage can be cleaned up by our gut both based on what you put in your mouth. So exciting. So gut microbes that produce butyrate uh, by metabolizing fiber, and that fiber can only come from plants. And that is how you, by choosing uh, a more plant-based diet, can affect a positive outcome in your brain, in your life, in your longevity, in your memory, your brain function, the size and the swelling of your brain, all of that by what you put in your mouth, the food choices on your plate. Now, when I was developing products, I saw a lot of proteins out on the market. And I noticed that almost all of the proteins, whether it's whey protein or the vast majority of plant proteins out there, were isolated proteins, stripped out, right? They have all the fiber removed. As a matter of fact, let me pull this up here. Um, so on the screen, you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, that's kind of small, but anyway, uh, clean green protein, the protein that I chose to produce is actually the whole plant. So you're getting the whole plant food in the product. And this way, a whole plant food full of its fiber. We are actually one of the highest out of the top five brands, uh, uh, plant protein brands out there to contain fiber. And remember, whey contains no fiber whatsoever unless they add it to the product. So you're getting zero fiber in any animal product. 
and clean green protein, which is right there. <laughs> clean green protein is, uh, is made from lentine, which is a whole plant. So we take the whole plant, the root, the stem, the leaf, everything, powder it down so that you can consume it as a shake and get all that fiber. That is 34% of your total day's worth of fiber in one scoop. So you're getting a real good source of fiber. You're getting polyphenols, which also feed the good bacteria in your gut. And this can help with your brain function. Also, speaking of brain function, lutein. It is one of the highest in lutein's, this plant called a duckweed uh, or lentine, as we use in our product. Lentin can actually uh, have one of the highest sources of lutein. I know lentine, lutein sounds the same thing, but lutein is a carotenoid really beneficial for brain function. So they've shown that uh, when an infant is born, it, well, actually still in the womb, it absorbs a ton of different, uh, of, of lutein. It has a preference for lutein. Actually about 60% of the carotenoids that are accumulate in the baby's brain before it's born is actually lutein. So this is, this is pretty interesting, pretty fascinating. You got the fiber feeds the bacteria that produce butyrates. You've got the polyphenols, rich in polyphenols, which also feed bacteria and produce even more beneficial metabolites. And you've got the lutein, the lutein plus omega-3s, all naturally occurring in the whole food plant-based state. Pretty exciting. Uh, I was the very first to bring lentein to market. We're really exciting about uh, winning the Nexty Award right there for the best supplement out of over 3,000 brands that attended the show. Really exciting to get that out there. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on this most recent research. I love talking about the studies and then how we can use nutrition to help promote the best overall health and lifestyle for our brain, for our fitness, and for our overall health. Lift clean and feed the machine. Thanks for watching.